You're listening to The Three Pillars of Success, a podcast that inspires people of all walks of life to gain perspective on what it means to succeed. My name is Geraldine Convento, and I'm best known for entrepreneurship, my skills in web presence, and SEO. Thanks for listening. Enjoy the show. Hey y'all, how you doing? It's me, Geraldine, the Entrepreneur Guide, Web and SEO Expert with another episode of the Three Pillars of Success podcast with my awesome guest. Hey, how are you? Hey, I'm doing great. How are you? I'm doing pretty good today. Excited to have (laughs) you on the show. So you ready to get started? Sure, why not? (laughs) (laughs) Who are you? Where are you from and what do you do for a living? Hello, everyone. Aloha. My name is Victoria Hinarau. I'm from Elk Grove, California, and I am the Emperor General for the Golden Dawn in the Alley. I'm also an 18th degree Reiki Grandmaster of the Usui System of Natural Healing and a High Priestess and the Mother Abbess of the Magdalena Ordinus, Venite Rose, a suborder of the Cosmic Alpha et Omega Order of Melchizedek. What do you do for fun? What do I do for fun after that mouthful? Hmm. Well, I do things like attend old school soul and R&B music concerts because I'm a 70s child. So I like Power Power, Earth, Wind & Fire, Santana, you know, all those San Francisco Bay Area artists like Confunction. But I also like jazz artists like Mindy Aber and Boney James. I also love to do journaling. Journal, journal, journal. I've been doing that my whole life, but I now use it as an outlet for my creative side, which ranges anywhere from composing haiku poetry, prosaic poetry, write long pieces. And I also do ceremonial rituals. And the last thing would be, I also pursue anything and everything that assists me to further my living magically, which includes exploring my own background as a hereditary Catalonian or Abulario shaman in the Philippine healing arts. In other words, you a badass. (laughs) (laughs) I wouldn't say that, but thank you very much. (laughs) (laughs) If people are listening to this podcast and they're like, wow. (laughs) It's another day at the office, folks. (laughs) What does success mean to you? Success for me is defined by attainment, accomplishment, and progress. My journey into identifying and developing the skills and resources I need to thrive as a practicing ceremonial magician, a priest, if you will. So I look at three prongs. First is to identify. I had to look within myself to identify who I am except that the ideas I regarded as righteous truths and therefore normal in my mind, weren't necessarily ideas embraced by my parents, peers, or others. So I had to overcome the desire for acceptance from others to realize that my light was bright enough to light my way forward. In looking inward, I forgave the lies I told, the mistakes that hurt others and realized freedom as I released the hidden stress of those shames. That was when I found the courage to be myself, be me, tapping into that inner well of strength and belief in myself and realizing that I am enough and can accomplish whatever I envision in mind. And for me, that is the mind of a magician. The second thing I look at is attainment and accomplishment. So it's from that point in my life that I began experiencing amazing Reiki experiences in healing and then extraordinary experiences while performing ceremonial rituals in a Golden Dawn temple. Concomitantly, I continued my esoteric studies and ritual work that incorporated both Eastern and Western mystery traditions, and this has been going since 1995. And then the last prong that I explore for success is progress. 
at first, my Reiki healing sessions were only with friends and family who were close by, but then my successes soon spread to people reporting being healed thousands of miles away from my home through a computer screen. Wow. When I began my Golden Dawn studies in 2008, I had no idea that I would be in the position that I'm in with the order today, 15 years later. And it was because of my Golden Dawn temple work that my destiny working with a Melchizedek Magdalene order was uncovered, discovered, and continues to unfold. You know, there's something that really stuck out to me of what you said earlier. You talked about uh, the acceptance or the non-acceptance actually of your way of being by parents. And I think traditionally growing up in a Filipino, Asian uh, heritage, it's pretty common, especially when parents immigrate from a foreign country over to the United States, that there's a particular vision that they have for us to be. Yes, very much so. Unfortunately, it's rooted in a society that is in the 40s and 50s, 30s, 40s, and 50s, if you include when they were born, and in the Philippines. Totally different culture. It was very difficult, Geraldine, growing up bicultural binational, I suppose. So I am a Filipino hyphenated American. If that sounds funny, well, you have to be in my shoes to really understand that one. But yes, a major roadblock that I had to overcome is the idea of persisting in the face of non-acceptance. And this was the test that revealed whether approval from others is really part of my perception of success in life. And well, it isn't. My foundation and the essential ingredients to my building blocks in knowledge, skills, and experience has always been within my reach. I just had to believe in the tools I had already been given in my toolbox. In other words, all I needed was self actualization, specifically. The realization that I am capable of creating and innovating with imagination and vision. And yes, I can trust my intuition as my compass. I went through very similar things growing up. And yeah, I aligned with that 100% self actualization, self development, finding your path and what really makes you happy. And for me, it was comparing it against the life that I was living. I was always struggling against what people would say I should do and be and that all of my creativity should be on the side as a afterthought. Right. And so I rebelled against that, but still there's something behind me that was pulling me and there was this inner conflict. And I didn't really come to terms with what that was until I got older. And I realized, oh, it's all these things that I've been being told growing up, conflicting against what I'm doing now. So now as an adult, I've had to consciously and subconsciously do a lot of work on making sure I'm clear about what it is that I'm here for, what I want to do, as opposed to what other people's visions for what I should be doing. And it's just interesting to see how that shift happens, that shift of confidence, that shift of freedom, inner freedom, knowing that you can make a choice and other people might not agree with that choice, but who cares? Because it still feels good to do things on your own fruition. Oh, yes, definitely. It does take courage. And unfortunately, our society is going toward the way of discouraging free thinking, critical thinking, self-confidence, believing in that inner voice. That is very much not the direction of today's average person, and that needs to change. For me, I've observed that a lot of it is really rooted in spirituality, and it doesn't necessarily have to be following a religion or a particular 
type of spirituality, but something that rings true to you. I have this lyric in one of my songs. It says, let the spirit be my guide for making decisions. And I feel like my intuition is closely aligned with spirituality and the messages that I allow myself to hear. It's your soul. It's your soul speaking and your soul is speaking for your spirit. And yes, the two are different. They're very different. And I think that our existence in this here and now, in part, is so that the soul can reunite with the bornless spirit that is within each one of us. That search, I think, is very much a part of the landscape of success. You have to know yourself, really. That's the bottom line. That's the bottom line. And yeah. um, all will be in right order because in my mind, you must know yourself to succeed because success is a positive expression of who we are, of who you are. So commitment to action begins within you. You can't commit to anything if you aren't committed to being your best. And how do you do that? By giving your mind the space to identify any sort of those mental, emotional parts of your heart that frame your present perceptions of the world around you because your master brain cells aren't located in that mass above your shoulders, but rather in the eight monadic cells that originated as your heart at conception. So you garner that courage to look within. Embrace your character strengths and accept your character flaws. And then release the insecurities you created so that you release pent up energies that no longer serve you. That's how you make room for empowerment. And just like that, you become successful in being you. And therefore, anywhere your focus fixates on will become another point of success for your life. You have to look within. What three pillars would you personally choose uh, to attribute to success? Oh, that's easy. Love, unity, and peace, or aloha, lokahi, and maluhia. Yes, I do think in Hawaiian, I was raised there as a child, the stories I was told will always be with me. And uh, they provide a very good backdrop for the Reiki that I teach. So what are my three? Aloha. Everybody thinks they know what aloha is, but it really embraces more than just hello, goodbye, or even thank you for some people. Because the most important of all those ideas is intelligence that sense of righteousness in thought, word, and deed. I didn't say right, I said righteousness. Because love is the universal vibration, the frequency that creates life. When we allow our hearts to open fearlessly again, we communicate clearly, we propagate knowledge succinctly, and we practice authentically with integrity. This is success through communion within the universal all mind. And that's love. Unity, lokahi, is answering the call to be one in body, mind, and spirit of becoming a holy triune light unto yourself and joining with like others to enlighten by example and moth. No, you can't teach somebody, but you can just be 
And by that being, you are an example for someone else. They can emulate or they can choose not to. The unity and community begins from within each other's aloha, each member's heart, each person's innate sense of righteousness in thought, word, and deed. So to be able to stand together in celebration of our strength through diversity is success. All you have to do is look at a rope with all of its separate strands, but bound together in similar direction, each distinct is still strength. And that's what I'm going for with talking about unity. And then you talk about peace, maluhia, the choice to allow yourself to commune in silent humility and respect with the interconnectedness that is our universe through one another. A reverence for that sense of place, seeking, fathoming, reveling in the divine space of no time. That dimension of consciousness where all forces feel reconciled in pleasant balance. To be able to breathe a full breath after all is said and done, to exhale and smile with a genuine sense of contentment in being, yes, that to me is success. We need to put that over a beat. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll give you some lyrics. You go ahead and spin it. <laughs> so I'm curious to know, what is a roadblock that you've had to overcome in your path to success and how did you overcome it? Well, that roadblock, again, would be the persistence in the face of non-acceptance. That would be the biggest one, because when you're bicultural, you're at home, you're Filipino, 100%, which is what I am, and including speaking the language at home, and then being told not to because they didn't want my tongue to get crooked from the Tagalog accent, and then I would suffer whatever, but at the same time, I'm supposed to assimilate, integrate, get along with the people outside of my home who are 100% American, don't share the same cultural values, family values. That made it really difficult. I felt like I had one foot planted on either side of the fence. So uncomfortable, so uncomfortable. So how I overcame it, in my day, the only way to overcome that kind of stress, that kind of struggle was academics. So I put my nose to the grindstone and I worked hard in school and um, I did well, I did very well, all the way through Berkeley, all the way through law school and theology school, yeah. And that's the only way I think is just to persist. Don't think about what others are thinking, even though it hurts and smile <laughs> because people won't be able to discern the stress that you actually feel when you put a smile on your face and you just lower your center of gravity and persist. That is the secret. What advice would you like to give anyone looking to achieve success? Well, always you have to start with yourself. You can't do anything unless you are very honest and frank with who you are. We're not all perfect. We weren't intended to be perfect. In fact, we are imperfectly perfect. So we have to discover within ourselves, who are we anyway? What is it that makes Victoria tick? And that means going into meditation. That means even just walking out in nature. 
spending a half an hour of your lunch with your shoes off, your toes in the grass, weather permitting, of course, and no electronica, no cell phones, no laptop, just the birds, the animals, and even just the people around you, people watching. But you have to give yourself time to breathe. If you don't give yourself time to breathe, you don't know who you're dealing with. And therefore, you don't know what you're projecting to others. They don't know you. And it doesn't match. It doesn't work. So yes, to me, the secret is to go within and meditate. And people will tell you, I don't know how to meditate. Yes, you do. You know how to breathe. All it takes is a breath, one breath, one heartbeat, one thought, one spoken word. If you can take the time to choose that word and then follow where that choice came from, well, that's a meditation, whether you know it or not. And that's a good start. Watch your word. And the only way to do that is to find yourself. And once you do, you'll be amazed at how beautiful you really are. You just have to have the guts to look within and and find out for yourself. Well, that sounds like a really complete episode, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> you should play it again. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for choosing to be on the show. I really enjoyed hearing your answers to these questions. All of these shows are always very special. This one in particular, people got to listen really well to everything that was shared. I think you guys now, with people they call millennials and younger, I mean, you, you all have a great opportunity to really be something. Go for it. Shit. Hell yeah. <laughs> 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 go for it go for it and don't look back don't make apologies be nice be courteous respectful because you can always communicate who you are without profanity without being rude to some group or another person it's very easy to do i think when people rely on that kind of speech it's a shortcoming in your communication skills. So I would tell that person, you need to read more. <laughs> if you don't know how to spray something, you need to read more. <laughs> Expand your vocabulary. Expand your vocabulary. Open your mind to other ideas. Don't limit yourself to whatever it was someone told you decades ago when you were like three. Four, five, come on. The world is different now. And you could be different too. Yes. Well, that wraps up today's Three Pillars of Success show. Remember, this airs on Spotify, Stitcher, Apple, all the places where a podcast can be listened to. You. So remember to like, share, subscribe, leave reviews because that's how more people find out about this podcast. More people become a success. Thanks, y'all. Have a great day and we'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.